Greetings in the name of Father God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. I am Apostle Sean Johnson, and welcome to Get Right With God. Thank you so much for joining me on today's broadcast. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Get Right With God TV official, and make sure you click the bell to get notifications so you'll know when I'm publishing new content. With that said, let's have a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. We give you praise, honor, and all the glory. It's all about you. It's not about me. You get the glory. Father, have your way even now. Speak a word. Thank you for this series. Thank you for every message. Thank you, O God, for what you're going to say and what you're going to do. I come against the enemy right now. Devil, you are a liar. You are defeated and you are destroyed by the blood of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would just speak a word to the nation. Speak a word to America. Speak a word, O God, in every community, in every hood. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Once again, I'm Apostle Sean Johnson and welcome to Get Right With God. Let's get right into God's word. Grab your Bible and turn with me to Ephesians chapter number four, verses number 25 through 32. That's Ephesians chapter number four, verses 25 through 32. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Your translation may be different, but the meaning is always the same. Last time for your hearing, Ephesians chapter number four, verses number 25, and we're going to conclude at 32. Hear now the reading of God's holy word. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your raft, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and in evil speaking be put to be put away from you with all malice, last verse, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted and forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you, God's word. I have taught on homosexual immorality, fornication, adultery, homosexuality, I've taught on smoking, drugs and alcohol, pornography, and gambling. Disclaimer, I'm not here to condemn. I'm here to encourage and empower with the word of God. From the series entitled Strange Addictions, I would like to present this final message, and that is social media. Social media media. Let's tap in. The Bible does not mention social media. Social media did not exist in the Old Testament and New Testament. God did not create social media. It is man-made. God does not condemn social media. Social media is not a sin. However, there are supporting scriptures that we can read about gossip, chatting, rumors, hearsay, idle talk, misinformation, backstabbing, bad mouthing, and backbiting. Social media is one of the biggest, and I mean the biggest, strange addictions. How is a strange addiction, Apostle? I'm glad you asked. According to addictioncenter.com, that's addictioncenter.com, I quote, social media addiction 
is a behavior addiction that is defined by being overly concerned about social media, driven by an uncontrollable urge to log on to or use social media and devoting so much time and effort to social media that it impairs other important areas. Social media attention uh, addiction is a cognitive behavior, just not a behavior um, a, a addiction or behavior. It's a it's a cognitive behavior. It's almost like a social a, a substance use disorder, you know, like drinking and alcohol. It's, it's just that addictive. The DNA of social media is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Let me say it again. The DNA of social media is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Social media, it, it, it modifies or magnifies the mood. Social media makes people get into their feelings. Social media alters attitudes and alters atmospheres. People have conflicts and relapses caused by social media. People check their phones every time a social media notification comes through. Uh huh. People um, scroll and scroll and scroll for hours and hours and hours, don't get no work done. People look down to stay engaged in a false world instead of looking up to experience God's creation. Let me say it again. People look down to stay engaged in a false world instead of looking up to experience God's creation. Billions, and I mean billions, are addicted to Facebook, Instagram, some people call it Instapop, Twitter, or the bird, or that tweet thing. They give it all kinds of names. Uh, TikTok and other platforms which have become idols. These platforms have, have become idols. If, 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 if you think about it, social media has its wicked ways. I got back up. Proverbs 16, chapter number 27 through 29. This is from the Living Bible, which says, idle hands are the devil's workshop. Idle lips are his mouthpiece. An evil man so strife, gossip separates the best of friends. Gossip separates the best of friends. My God. Then it says, wickedness loves company and leads others into sin. As of 2023, Facebook has 2.99 billion monthly active users. Instagram has over 2.35 billion monthly active users. 47.84% of the world's 4.18 billion smartphone users access Instagram every month. Twitter has around 450 million monthly active users. It is estimated that this number will reach 652.23 million by 2028. TikTok has over 1.677 billion users globally, out of which 1.1 billion are its monthly active users as of 2023. And Elon Musk platform X has more than 540 million active users. As of 2023, the Christian population is approximately 2.6 billion in the world of 8.1 billion. I round that number off because it's like 8.0 point something, but I put 8.1 billion. 
my testimony, my truth. When I joined Facebook years ago, you know, I used the platform incorrectly, as most of us did and still do. I am a faithful believer in Jesus Christ. But my posts at the beginning did not reflect my faith and character. Meaning I clap back. Yeah, I will clap back at folk. I would debate folk. I will cut folk from top to bottom. And I didn't care. That's when I first started out on Facebook. I would clap back, debate folk, cut folk, and I didn't even care. I was stalked. I was hacked. I was in Facebook jail many times. But you know what? I was convicted. Yes, the Holy Spirit convicted me. I have a love-hate relationship for social media. I'm sure you do too. Don't even lie. You have a love-hate relationship with social media. You want to be on there, then you don't want to be on there. So I deactivated my Facebook account. That's the only thing I had at the time. I deactivated my Facebook account. One week later, I was back on the platform. I told myself this time, when I got back on the platform, I said, I'm going to do better. Well, at least I'm going to try to do better. I was, you know, going to be a good steward over the platform. Use it, use it for, you know, for, for what it needs to be used for. So there was a time when I, you know, had to remove myself from Facebook because I was dealing with some turmoil, torment, trauma, and triggers. I was ending a tumultuous marriage at the time. And at the time I experienced shattered vows, but I knew there was destiny beyond divorce. Uh -huh. And so I had to go before God to work it all out without social media. I had to purge and be healed from my pain. I couldn't be on these platforms and, and, and sharing my pain or, or, you know, taking my pain off for other people. I, I wouldn't do that. So I had to be quiet and I had to be still in a, in a season or that season of silence, no communication, no contact, no social media, nothing, just me and God. And so I went through withdrawals, you know, like anybody else, you get off social media. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take a Facebook break. I'm, I'm on Facebook vacation. And then you, 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 you ain't been on the platform for a minute, probably about a month. And you going through withdrawals. You got the itch. Yeah, I went through my withdrawals. I was missing being on the platform. It was a trying time, but God, God, he kept me. He, he, he didn't give up on me and I didn't give up on him. And, you know, I didn't even give up on love. I was, I was pretty much, I would say, God, I'm done. But God had to correct me. He said, son, you are not done. Watch what I do. And sure enough, God has a sense of humor. God did the thing because I didn't give up a love. I am happily married to my best friend, beautiful and blessed wife, Pastor Michelle Irby Johnson. And I thank God for her every single day. God did it. I didn't do it. I was obedient. I did what I had to do. I shut it all the way down and I had to go before him. He did it. I decided to go, go back on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I decided to go back. And then I created an Instagram account this time and a Twitter account. And I created a YouTube account for business and ministry only. My wife can vouch for me. I use these platforms for evangelistic tools to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. However, I was hacked 20 times because most of the time I, I was hacked because I was being serious about doing God's work. People don't like that. So I had some haters and I had some hackers. Haters going to hate. I had some haters and I had some hackers. And my Facebook and Instagram accounts were duplicated several times. People sent him snapshot and stuff to me like, yeah, you've been duplicated again. You've been duplicated again. My Facebook was duplicated by somebody else. I couldn't even, then my, all of, all of my accounts was, my email accounts were just connected to Facebook was uh, compromise. So yeah, it was, it, it was crazy. So 
my Twitter account was only created for my radio broadcast. That's all it went. I'm getting no no likes, no nothing. You know, it just I just had to open an account, a Twitter account for my radio broadcast. So, you know, I was managing my accounts, I was managing my wife accounts, I was managing other people's accounts because I do social media management along with graphic design, and I was juggling all these different accounts and managing these accounts. And you know what? It got to be too much. It got to be too much. So I started shutting stuff down. I started telling people I can't do it. I was done. I made the final decision. And when I say I said final decision, I even set a date. The date I set, it was the day before the date I set. I made the final decision to deactivate all of my accounts for good. And guess what? I'm free. I am doing fine. No withdrawals. No issues. I don't even miss the platforms. Friends and family would text me and say, yeah, Apostle, we miss you on the platforms. Oh, well. Text me, email me, send me smoke signals. Uh Uh-huh. You know how to pick up the phone and call me because I ain't going back. I'm still broadcasting and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ right here, right now on my YouTube channel. However, I am looking to create my own network to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many people, including the Christian community, are stuck and shackled, trapped and and chained to social media. Everything is about social media. You know, um, God doesn't even want you to be on the platforms. You've been hearing God all the time. God said, I need you to get off the platforms. That's not where it's at. That's not where it's at. Ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing happening. You got three members trying to have virtual service. And God been telling you all along to get off these platforms. But you're ignoring him. God has been speaking to you all clearly, but you are ignoring him. Social media affects people's mental health, emotional health, physical health financial health, and most importantly, spiritual health. If used incorrectly, social media can wreak havoc in your relationship with God. Marriage, job, family. If used improperly, social media will be your strange addiction. Let's look at the text. The book of Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul during his third uh, missionary journey. Uh, Ephesians is one of the four book, books or four epistles, four letters. That's where ep- epistle means letters, either epistles or letters known as the uh, prison epistles, including Philippians, Colossians, and what else? Philemon. And so the apostle Paul decided this letter or epistle to make it two parts, or I like to call it two segments. Ephesians chapter number one, verses three, verse three through chapter number three, verse uh, verse 21 talks about our position in Christ, which which emphasis is on the sovereignty, grace and reconciliation. Ephesians chapter number four, verse one through chapter number six, verse 20 talks about our practice on earth, which emphasis is on the new unity, the new walk and our new strength. You got it? Ephesians is doctrinal and practical. I taught this in another message. I'm telling you this again because it's we're, we're, we're coming from Ephesians chapter number four. Ephesians is doctrinal and practical. Paul shows us our vertical relationship of God, doctrinal, and our horizontal relationship with others practical. We are a holy community in God, and we are to live out our calling. How do we see Christ in Ephesians? We see Christ as our source of every spiritual blessing. We see Christ as the cornerstone of the church, and we see Christ as the standard of spiritual maturity. As believers, we should be 
examples of Jesus Christ with his character and maturity and represent him in the earth, represent him in the nations, represent him in our homes, represent him in our marriages, represent him on all platforms, including social media. When we approach a Ephesians chapter number four, the apostle Paul is encouraging and teaching us about living to God's glory. We are to walk worthy of the call and we are to walk in the light. The, the apostle Paul, he explains what God did for us and what God is still doing for us. When we really understand how much God did for us, we will naturally and intentionally want to serve and obey him out of gratitude and thankfulness. We, we, we must love God just because he's God. Uh -huh. Stop always asking God for stuff. Stop always begging God for stuff. God, I need a car. God, I need a house. God, I need money. God, this, 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 and that. No. We have to. Love God just like he loved us. Love God just as he is. He is God. He's the I am that I am. We must know who we are and whose we are in God. We must walk worthy of the calling with which we are called. God called us from the foundation of the world. God called us. He is the foundation. Jesus is our rock on which we stand. We are believers because we are God's firstborn, meaning we are God's kingdom citizens. And as long as you are born again, believer, you are a kingdom citizen because Jesus Christ is our Messiah and King. As I continue to build this message, the apostle Paul stated that we are to have character of a worthy walk with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, and endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We, we must walk in humility. God knows I try to, I choose to walk in hum humility. I try every single day. You don't want God, you don't want God to humble you. Humble yourself before God. Humble yourself before God. Walk in humility. Walk in forgiveness. Walk in spiritual maturity. Walk in spiritual unity. It does not say endeavor to walk in evil, discord, revenge, uh, witchcraft, and social media sorcery. Yes, I said it. In Jesus, we share our Father we share one Father. We share one Spirit. We share one Lord. We share one body, one hope, one faith, one baptism. In Ephesians chapter number four, verses number 11 through 12, the Apostle Paul shares the offices of spiritual leadership in the church and their purpose. We call them the fivefold gifts or the fivefold ministry. Jesus established these offices, including apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints, work of the ministry, and edifying of the body of Christ. Questions. Are leaders on social media platforms equipping, doing the real work of ministry, and edifying the body of Christ, or are they being tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting? Are leaders speaking the truth in love or speaking lies and hate on social media? You done got me riled up today. Are leaders building up or tearing down on social media? My God, help me, Holy Ghost, up in my house. In Ephesians chapter number four, verses 17 through 19, the apostle Paul shared that we are to put off the old man and put on the new man. Some of you still got on the old man and don't have no sign of a new man. You're still acting ghetto. You're still acting carnal. You're still acting in your old ways. You're supposed to be saved. You're supposed to be a new creature. But nah, you acting like the old man and not a new man. He says, 
This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness, my God, of their hearts who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. My God from Zion, that sounds like social media to me. Social media has caused many people's thinking to be fruitful and their understanding to be darkened. Social media has caused many people to be alienated from the life of God. Social media have been a demonic influence that caused people to rebel against God and reject Jesus Christ. I rebuke you and everybody else and every single demon. Many people are afraid to leave social media. Let me say it again. Many people are afraid to leave social media. Many people are afraid to leave social media. They should be fearing God who can destroy social media. Without God, it will not be none of this. It won't be no world. It would have ended with Adam and Eve. It would have ended with Noah. People are afraid to leave social media. Proverbs chapter number nine, verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Like Paul, I encourage each and every one of you to put off the old man and put on the new man, put off the old self, the former conduct, the corruption, the lust, and put on true righteousness and holiness, put off social media and put on Jesus. Social media is designed and developed to control your life, to control your mind, control your activities, control your feelings, control how you say things, control what you do, control your emotions. Some of you let social media control your marriage. Oh, oh, amen. Lights in my house. Some of you let social media control your marriage. Sidebar, just because I'm not on social media does not mean my wife should not be on social media. It is her life. She do whatever she want to do. And it's her salvation. She had to work out her own soul salvation with fear and trembling. So just because I'm not on the platform don't mean she ain't got, she, she ain't got to get off the platform. You know, and besides my, my wife, she don't, you know, she, she's not using social media like that religiously. Like some of you do, like most people I know. Yeah, that's right. Social media has become a religion where people follow these false apostles, these false prophets, these false teachers, these false leaders, these false celebrities. Social media will lead the way to a great falling away. I encourage you to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Philippians 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Have the mind of Christ, the spirit of Christ, the heart of Christ, the character of Christ. So you can think, so you can act, so you can talk, so you can walk, so you can feel, you can do things as Christ did. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Do not let social media control your mind and life. You control social media. Let me say it again. You control social media with the spiritual mind of Jesus Christ and follow sound doctrine. Don't follow these, this, uh, these other doctrines. Don't follow... Um, what other people are saying just to get money, follow Jesus Christ, follow sound doctrine so you can be delivered and stay delivered from this strange addiction. Here we go. 
we get a little more deeper. If social media is your strange addiction and you want to be delivered to display good character, you must, number one, stop lying. Stop lying. Verse, therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Many of you on social media are not who you appear to be. You look like a public success, but a private failure behind closed doors. Stop lying. No more lies. No more pretense. A new man or woman in Christ tells the truth. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Tell your neighbor the truth. Tell your wife, your husband the truth. Stop lying. Tell the people on social media the truth. Tell them your testimony. If you are a believer in Christ's body, stop lying and tell the truth. First Timothy chapter number five, verse 13, ESV says, because besides that, they learn to be idlers. Going about from house to house. Uh-huh. Let me say, let me let me emphasize from phone to phone, uh-huh, from post to post, uh-huh, and not only auditors, but also gossips and busybodies saying what they should not, saying what they should not. There is no place to lie, people, people of God. When you lie to others, you end up lying to yourself. When you lie to others, you end up lying to yourself. Be true to yourself. Be your true self. Be your authentic self. Be your authentic and true self on social media. As soon as you stop lying on social media, God will deliver you from this strange addiction. If social media is your strange addiction and you want to be delivered to this display good character, you must, number two, stop sinning. Verse, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Many of you are out of control on social media. Out of control. Y'all are out of control, especially the saints. You're out of control. You're not just out of your mind, but you're out of control. You have these debates and you get angry with each other. Some of you are not what you post to be. Some of you are not what you post to be. Some of you let the devil use you. Some of you let the devil ride. He want to drive. Some of you let the devil use you. Distract you and disrupt you your whole entire life because somebody got angry with you that day on social media and clapped back at you and now you mad you at work pouting you at home pouting and all that kind of stuff stop it stop it a new man or woman in christ may get angry Uh uh-huh but they do not sin they don't they don't retaliate they don't clap back they don't they just they 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 swallow it up you know go about a day you know what i'm saying in the message translation the apostle paul says it like this go ahead and be angry he said go ahead and be angry you do well being angry ha but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge don't stay angry don't go to bed angry. Pause. I'm going to get back to the, the scripture. Pause. Husbands and wives do not go to bed angry. It's across the board, but I'm I'm using it in the context. Husbands and wives do not go to bed angry. Because you had an issue with each other on social media. You, you posted something that your wife didn't like. Or you or you post something that your husband didn't like. That's petty. Put the pettiness to us to the side. Stop being angry with each other because social media should not control your life. That 
hard, that much that you are angry with each other. Then the scripture says, don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Do not give no opportunity to the devil to make you angry and sin. No opportunity. It is the devil's job to cause you to sin. He wants you to sin. He wants you to rebel. He wants you to reject. He wants you to get angry. He's the accuser of the brethren. It is the devil's work to accuse and divide the family of God. It is the devil's work to accuse and divide marriages. And y'all letting the devil use you. It is the devil's work to sow discord among the brothers and sisters. The devil wants to divide the church with division. And he's doing a good job at it. Not just in service, but on social media. Hebrews chapter number 10, verses 24 to 25 ESV says, and let us consider how to stir up another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, not being angry with one another, encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near when Jesus Christ's return is imminent. As soon as you stop sinning on social media, God will deliver you from this strange addiction. If social media is your strange addiction and you want to be delivered to display character, good character, you must, number three, stop stealing. First, let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. I think the Apostle Paul had a sidebar moment right here. I was reading the scriptures, studying, getting ready to do this message. And I was like, I paused, I read it. I read the scripture. I said, I think Apostle Paul had a sidebar moment right here. But now that I think about it, people steal from other people, even on social media. They steal somebody else's ideas. They steal somebody else's vision. I know Apostle Jerome Ira Thomas Sr. can testify to this. Stealing by raising money for themselves, not for others in need. Stealing by campaigning to raise funds for themselves, not for others in need. Get an honest job so that you can help others who can't work, help others who are in need. Stop stealing. A new man and woman in Christ does not steal. I have an eight to five job. I have two businesses. I have two ministries in which the ministries, I do not get paid a dime. I don't ask people for money on my broadcast and God still provides. God still protects and God still preserves. I pay my tithe and give offerings so I can help others in need. So I can do outreach and do in reach. I don't steal or rob God. Neither should you. I don't use God's money for personal gain. We work with our hands. We labor with our hands. We work so we can provide for our needs. We work so we can provide for our family. Stop getting the attitude and irritated and frustrated because you got to help your husband or wife. You got to help your family members with money. My sons, this is my truth, my testimony right here. My sons, they're they of age, they're adults. They're adulting, trying to adult. And they still call me, dad, I need $50 so I can get, catch a lift to work. Dad, I need $50 so I can uh, pay this bill. Dad, I need $50. And I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving. And what happens? God always blesses me. He's always on time. He always gives me favor, which follows me. 
he provides because what? I'm giving, I'm providing. And every time I give, I don't say, uh, I don't get upset. I don't worry. I say, God, okay, I need you to replenish and give me triple, a triple portion. I need you to give me what I need because I'm helping somebody else in need. We work so we can build the kingdom. Uh Uh-huh. That's part of being a disciple. We work so we can build the kingdom. Matthew 6.33 says, this is the New King James Version, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. As long as we seek God, as long as we put in first his righteousness, as long as we live in holiness and righteousness and give and be obedient and do what we're supposed to do as disciples, as witnesses, as kingdom citizens, he said all these things is going to be added to us. I don't pray for material things. Uh Uh-huh. I want the spiritual things of God. I believe what Paul was really saying is the purpose for getting becomes getting. The purpose for getting becomes getting. As soon as you stop stealing on social media, God will deliver you from this strange addiction. If social media is your strange addiction and you want to be delivered to display good character, you must, number four, stop corrupting. First, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. In other words, the Apostle Paul was saying, watch the way you talk, even on social media. Watch the way you talk, even on social media. I'm using my Holy Ghost imagination. Paul, Paul was basically saying, watch what you the way you talk. But I added the part, even on social media. Watch how you talk to people. Some of y'all need to have several seats because you're just corrupt. You're shady. That word corrupt means shady. I'm going to give you another word for corrupt. Suspect. Foul. Dirty. You got some dirty mouths. You, You let anything come out of your nasty, stinky, smelly, funky, dirty mouth. You lash out to this person. You lash out to that person. You lash out with your nasty pink rag tongue in your mouth. Stop it. Proverbs 18, 21, King James Version says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Speak life. Stop speaking death, especially over yourself. Speak life. Speak words of life. Speak positive words. And they, and then it says, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The saints need to be ashamed of themselves being corrupt and corrupting people on social media. Leaders need to be ashamed of themselves. I know I'm talking right. Being corrupt and corrupting people on social media. Sidebar, stop broadcasting your business and airing your dirty laundry on social media. Rewind, let me say it again and I'm back. Stop broadcasting your business and airing your dirty laundry on social media. Stop being negative. Christians, ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Christian does not have any business posting horoscopes, scopes of horror, demonic stuff. Demonic, I'm talking about like spewing out demonic stuff against people. You got, oh my God, from Zion, help me, Holy Ghost. You got, you, you, you have a, you have a a Christian page that you created under your name. And if somebody posts something that don't agree with you, that's sound doctrine, that's, that's, According to God's word, you you lash out, you speak negative against that person. That happened to me before. So what did I do? I came off the platform because 
Y'all don't want, they don't want me. They don't want to hear God's word. They don't want the truth. Stop being so negative. Some stuff you just need to keep to yourself. You know that thing on Facebook where it says, what's on your mind today? You don't need to say everything that's on your mind. Be positive. What are you saying? What are you talking about, Apostle? Be, be positive. Don't be negative. God gave us words to be a gift to help, not hurt. It is said that there are hurt people hurting people. Comfort, not cut. Build, not tear down. Facebook jail is just not enough. That might need Facebook federal prison. When you return from Facebook jail, you are worse off than what you can't start it. You are worse with your mouth. Social media needs a mute button because th these foul and dirty mouths need just a bar of soap, a virtual bar of soap, <laughs> and, 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 sit, and, and have you sit for hours, I'm days, months, may maybe a year. Maybe you'll learn your lesson. Stop corrupting people with your mouth. Stop corrupting with your talk. Stop corrupting with your words. If you do not have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. Hush. Let me say how the mother say, hush. Colossians 4, 6, ESV says, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each other. As soon as you stop corrupting on social media, God will deliver you from this strange addiction. If social media is your strange addiction and you want to be delivered to display good character, you must, number five, stop grieving. Stop grieving. Verse, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. If we grieve the Holy Spirit, we are grieving God because God is the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve Holy Spirit. Do not grieve God. Many of you are breaking God's heart. Many of you are breaking the Holy Spirit's heart with what you share and what you post and what you say and how you act. Believers in Christ should not be posting themselves, drinking alcohol, smoking weed, twerking, booty popping, booty shaking, and near naked pictures. Stop it! Let me let that say lie right there. Yeah, we're going to go over the time today because I got to get this out. This is the last message of this series. I got to get this out. How is that glorifying God? How is that pleasing God? We hurt him. Holy Spirit is sitting back with his arms folded, looking at you. Holy Spirit sitting back looking at some of you and your activity on social media while shaking his head. And he's, and while he's shaking his head, he's throwing scriptures at you. He's throwing his message that Apostle Sean is preaching. But you're ignoring the Holy Spirit. You're grieving the Holy Spirit because you're doing what you want to do. You're in the flesh, not in the spirit. The Holy Spirit got his arms folded, looking at you. Looking at God like, yeah, you see this? And just shaking his head. Because some of y'all are out of order. You're grieving Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our gift from God. As a born again believer, we receive Holy Spirit. We're baptized. We're filled. And in order to inherit the kingdom of God, you got to have be born of water and spirit. You got to have the Holy Spirit in your life. 
He's moving. He's breathing. He's actively living on the inside of us. He dwells on the inside of us. And we are his temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't you even know it? He is the most important part of our lives. Why? Because Jesus said, I'm going to give you a comforter so you can have until I come back. And we are grieving him with our foolishness on social media. Proverbs 18.2 ESV says, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Paul is encouraging us that we should not take the gift of the Holy Spirit for granted. A new man and woman in Christ will not grieve the Holy Spirit. We know that he has sealed us both with identification and protection. Our spiritual ID should say Holy Spirit. Our spiritual ID should say Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit, he is our shield. He is our safeguard. He is our security. He is our paraclete and he is our protection from all of these satanic driven platforms. And as soon as you stop grieving on social media, grieving the Holy Spirit, God will deliver you from this strange addiction. I got two more and we're going to be out. Two more. Hang in there with me. Two more. Like the head. Here you go. If social media is your strange addiction and you want to be delivered to display good character, you must, number six, stop backbiting. Verse, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You may have a social media addiction if you have bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil, you backstabbing, you, you backbiting, uh huh, you got malice, you, you got profane talk, you got all this, you're grieving, you're doing all of this stuff. You might have a social media addiction. You are not gentle, you're not being sensitive to people's feelings, you, you, you're not respecting people's space timelines and walls, make a clean break. I'm encouraging you. You ain't got to do what I did. You do whatever, but you know, it's a process. If you want, you say, you know what? I'm going to give myself a day. I'm going to, on January 1st, 2024, I'm going to come off social media. So I'm encouraging you, make a clean break from everything associated with backbiting and social media. If, 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 if you are backbiting and you are dealing with all of this stuff, bitterness, all the anger, all that stuff, yeah, you might need to take a either a break from social media or just leave it all, all together because it's affecting your life. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse 1, King James Version says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, let aside, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us a new man and new woman in christ have self-control i pray every day father let the the fruit of the spirit the fruits not fruits fruit of the spirit manifest in my life so I can have some self-control. And when I find myself getting a little upset or angry or the fruit of the spirit, it, it rises up in me. Spirit of the Lord rises up in me and he checks me, say, okay, I need you to have love, son. I need you to have self-control. The, 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 they, they control their emotions, especially on social media. Uh -huh. They control believers in Christ. We control our emotions especially on social media. Paul was teaching us how to deal with a social media addiction and how to glorify God when we encounter the effects from it. And as soon as you stop backbiting on social media, 
God will deliver you from this strange addiction. If social media is your strange addiction and you want to be delivered to display good character, you must stop lying, stop sinning, stop stealing, stop corrupting, stop grieving, stop backbiting. And lastly, yay, we at number seven, start forgiving. Stop doing this. Start forgiving. Verse, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, and forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. A new man and woman in Christ show the same kindness, tenderheartedness, and forgiveness to others that God showed them. God forgave us. Christ forgave us. He forgave our self-inflicted nonsense. God forgives us for putting social media before him. God forgives us for putting social media before him. God keeps reconciling and reconciling and reconciling and forgiving and forgiving and forgiving even when man rejects him, rejecting him for trusting in social media, refusing him for believing in social media. Seek forgiveness from God every day. Forgive yourself every day. Forgive others every day. Yo, bro, I'm sorry for what I said to you on social media. I'm sorry, sis, for what I said to you on Twitter. I'm sorry, my friend, for what I said to you on TikTok or what I talked about to you on TikTok. I'm so sorry, Pastor, I blasted you all up and down on the in the chat rooms. Seek forgiveness from others every day. Do not withhold your forgiveness. It ain't just for you. It's for others. We must treat others as God treats us. When we start forgiving others, even on social media, we will fulfill every word the apostle Paul is sharing with us in this message, is sharing with us in this chapter, Ephesians chapter number four, verses 25 through 29. Paul encourages us to be gentle with each other. Be sensitive to one another. Forgive one another. Do it quickly. Don't let it linger from days and hours and weeks and years and years and years. And you ain't forget that person who you blasted all on social media. And now y'all ain't friends no more. And you now you let you done left the church because that didn't hurt your feelings. Do it quickly, forgive quickly, and then Paul said, not just do it quickly, but thoroughly, as God in Christ forgave you. And as soon as you start forgiving, even on social media, God will deliver you from this strange addiction. As I close, I know you're saying, Apostle, you shared a whole lot of information in Revelation regarding social media. I know my wife in the background shaking her head like, yeah, you didn't share a lot, Paul. You didn't share a lot. You know, we, we, we approach it one hour. But I had to get this out. I know you are saying, Apostle, you didn't share a whole lot of information in Revelation regarding social media. Are social media networks a big mission field for evangelism or is it a big waste of time? I think it's a big waste of time. The people behind the platforms didn't uh, did not create it for Christians. Yes, I said it. The people behind the platforms and I ain't saying no names. I know all the names. The people behind the platforms did not create it for Christians. They're secular networks. 
I even found out that God too is the sister or the brother or the 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 counterpart of YouTube. Facebook is not a faith-based platform. And a lot of y'all need to get off the Facebook and get into the faith book. To me, it's a big waste of time. That's one of the reasons why I got all the platforms. It's a time suck. Are believers really giving God the glory on these platforms or are they going through the motions and getting caught up like everybody else? I remove myself from Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter because it's a distraction, it is demonic, and it is the dangerous. It's the distraction, it is demonic, and it is dangerous. People do not see it. They don't even care that it's on a platform. Yeah, I'm on each platform. I'm going to post my pictures. I'm I'm, I'm a, you know. Like I said earlier, yeah, you're a public success, but you're a private failure. You do more of this, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. You don't pick up the word of God and you don't scroll through nothing. It's still, you You got all this dust on, the, on it. Pick up this and put down your phone. Put down your phone. You got to have your phone right next to you. The first thing you do when you get up in the morning, you don't pray, you See what how many how many people liked your last post. Then when they ask you to quote the Bible, you can't quote it. You some of y'all can't oh, some of y'all can't even recite or, or give me Genesis Genesis through Revelation. You don't want to be in Pastor Michelle Irby Johnson's class, but she'll make you recite it. I was in her class about three years. She tried, she, she tested me a lot. She, yeah, I had to be ready. That's because you have to study the word of God. You have to be in the word. Get, get, put down the platforms. I ain't saying you, you have to get off it. Get into the word of God. But I got off the platforms because it's a distraction. It's demonic and it's dangerous. And people don't see it. People don't see what I see, don't people, they don't see how I see it. They're blind to the truth. They're blind to what's going on. Do your research. That's all I'm going to say. Do your research. Social media has its positive sides, but it's also have its negative sides. It has its dark sides. It has its demonic sides. Like I shared in, the, in this message. People need to be delivered from social media and its effects. Do you know the people also can become narcissistic with this strange addiction called social media? Narcissistic people. I got I, 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 I guess not because your social media participation breeds narcissism. Your participation and preoccupation with these platforms have become your primary focus and source to promote yourselves, not God. Social media not only needs a mute button, but it also needs an accountability button. When a believer is out of line, out of control, Tap the accountability button, which will go to a private chat for correction, for care, and a countenance check. Proverbs chapter 20, 27, verse 17 says, iron shop is iron. So a man shop is his friend's countenance. Do not live for the status. Do not live for the photo. Do not live for the likes. Do not live for the comments. Do not live for the shares. Do not live for the posts. Do not live for the filters. Do not live for the foolishness. Do not live for the wickedness. Do not live for this strange addiction. Live for God. Live for Jesus Christ. Live for Holy Spirit. 
live to be salt and light. Live to be a witness. Live to be a disciple. Live to bring glory to God in the earth. Not just on social media, in the earth. First Corinthians chapter number 10, verse 31, New NIV says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. If you are willing to let go and let God, let him use you on social media for his glory. You will have freedom to participate and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you are going to be on social media, use it for good. Use it for God's purposes. Use it to represent Jesus Christ. Use it to evangelize. Use it to build and advance God's kingdom. And I'm sure there are you know, some legit ministries with legit leaders who are integral and intentional about igniting your faith and fire to be God's true witnesses and disciples in the earth. Hebrews 13, one says, let brotherly love continue. Proverbs 3, seven says, be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Ephesians 5, 16 says, making the best use of the time because the days are evil, all from ESV translations. Romans 12 and 12 ESV says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing your mind that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is God, what is good and what is acceptable and what is perfect. What is the will of God for your life? Is the will of God for you to be on social media doing whatever you want to do outside the will of God? Or is the will of God for you to be on the platform? Because he, you could be on the platform. It ain't in the Bible, but it's how you use it. Use it for God's glory. Use it for God's good. Let it be the will of God for you to evangelize on these platforms. So I'm encouraging you. I am encouraging you right here, right now. To use social media to impact the world for Jesus Christ. Use social media to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Share powerful gospel uh, video, music videos. Share powerful gospel messages. Share powerful pictures that pleases God. Share a powerful prayer. Share your powerful testimony. Share the great commission and fulfill it. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 tells us, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go to therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you. And lo, I am always with you. I'm, he said, I'm always with you, even to the end of the age. Amen. And amen. Listen, if you want to live and not die to, from your sin and strange addiction called social media, I invite you to surrender your whole entire life to Jesus Christ, who wants to be your Lord and Savior. Don't let your Lord and Savior be social media. Let your Lord and Savior be Jesus Christ. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God doesn't want you to perish and go to hell. He don't want you to go to hell. We weren't invited to hell. We were invited to receive salvation so we can have eternal life. Romans 10, 13 says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you got to do is call on Jesus Christ. Say, Jesus, I want to be saved. Acts 16, 31 says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household will be saved. You got to believe. Believe on Jesus Christ. You can't just call him, but you can call him and you got to believe. Believe in your heart. Believe by faith and you will be saved. You and your household. To give your life to Jesus Christ, please pray this prayer with me. I want you to pray with me. 
this prayer. You ready? Let's pray. Say, dear Jesus, I am a sinner and I want to be saved. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. I confess with my mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for every one of my sins. Save me. Free me. Transform me. Change me. Baptize me. And fill me. Sanctify me. Deliver me from every strange addiction that I'm dealing with. So I can be free and filled and baptized with Holy Spirit. Replace my carnal mentality and identity, my ghetto mentality and identity, powered by fear with your kingdom mentality and identity powered by faith so I can have eternal life with Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to welcome you to the family of God. Welcome to the family of God. You are in there. You are in there. You are a believer. You are born again believer and you are a kingdom citizen. Because you are a kingdom citizen, you now have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. In order to maintain your personal relationship with Jesus Christ, not your religion, but a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you got to find yourself a Christ-centered ministry, a kingdom-driven ministry with a kingdom-driven driven pastor, a leader, or apostle. So they can help you to grow so we reap and expand in his kingdom. You need that. You need to grow. You need to learn how to uh, survive on this journey with Jesus. You need to learn how to build your relationship with Jesus. You need to learn how to build your relationship with other people, with uh, with your with having a relationship, a right relationship. You have to learn how to build your relationship and walk in holiness and righteousness. You got to stay in God's word. You got to meditate. You got to read. You got to study God's word. Go to Bible study. You got to fast. You got to pray. You got to do a lot of things. So you can grow and build your relationship with Jesus Christ. You got to surround yourself with kingdom minded believers. So they can help you to become an effective witness and to be an effective disciple of Jesus Christ. And that's what we need in the world. We need effective witnesses and we need effective disciples. Amen. We must witness to the world. We got to let sinners and backsliders and family and friends neighbors our haters enemies let all of them know the people on social media let them all know that they need to get right with god so they can have eternal life in jesus christ so once again i want to welcome you to the family of god welcome you to the family kingdom family i'm so happy if you ex pray the prayer of faith you pray the salvation you receive salvation i want to welcome you to the kingdom family Amen and amen. A few announcements. We're going to pray and close out. Thank you so much for being with me, being a part of this journey. Thank you so much for those who have watched this entire series from message one to this last and final message. More to come. God is speaking. God is moving. And I want you to stay tuned to what God is going to share on this platform. I want you to connect with Apostolic Grace Evangelistic Fellowship, where we are winning souls for God's kingdom. Visit us at www.agefellowship.org. That's www.agefellowship.org. Watch Get Right with God TV official on Sundays at 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. That's Get Right with God TV official on Sundays at 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. Subscribe, share, and get notifications so you know when I'm publishing new content. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We love you so much. 
Thank you for this series. Thank you for every message. Thank you for the manifestation of God being revealed in our lives. Thank you for helping us to get right with you. That's what it's about, God. Thank you for my obedience. Thank you for our obedience to not self-inflict ourselves with this nonsense and these strange addictions. We want to be free from these strange addictions, including the strange addiction of social media. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us. Help us in this hour. Help us in these last and evil days. Help us in the last few months we have in this year. Do something marvelous. Do something great in our lives. Just change us for the better. Let your glory be revealed in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm praying for the healing of this world, the healing of every nation, Israel and Jerusalem. I'm praying for the healing of America, every city, state, region, jurisdiction. I'm praying for the healing of every community and hood, street, and hood. Have your way, God. Bring souls into the kingdom and help people, oh God, who have any type of addiction to be delivered and set free this is our prayer in jesus name amen and amen thank you so much for tuning in to get right with god i am apostle sean johnson souls must be saved lives must be changed do not wait do it now god bless